Hi. You guys can hear me fine? Okay. Uh, no. Today's topic is a bit unusual, coming from an academic and an educator. But this started about four to five years ago. I was having dinner with uh, some of my wise friends and the husband of one of the wise friends and I and some were washing the dishes and we were talking. And then, he, after a while, he said to me, Eric, I believe that going to college is a waste of time. Unless you're going for a technical degree or a professional degree like um, medicine, engineering, architecture, law, where you need a certification. And I said, computer science, you don't even need to go to college, especially IT and computer science. And I said, well, what do you mean? So he said, well, most of the thing nowadays, you can go to Google, Wikipedia, you can go and learn online, on YouTube. Or if worse comes to worse, you don't understand it, buy a textbook from the bookshop. And you have to understand this guy's background. His name is Ryan, by the way. He started with a degree in hospitality, went and did some business with his parents, business, and um, his wife, married his wife, and they started the music school together. And so he was dealing, building up the business and everything. After a while, he realized he had no HR, human resource software to manage the staff and all that. And so he learned by himself, through YouTube and reading up books, how to program an HR module by himself. And then after a while, he realized there was a need. Because all of these small companies, 5, 10, 20 people, don't, cannot afford this kind of uh, HR software, which is very expensive out in the market. So he decided he gave it to them free. And if he wanted only the basic module, of course, the customization, extra modules, then he would charge for it. And when the music school, they finally closed it down due to the economic uh, events at the beginning of the year, that's what he's doing full time now. From hospitality to business to programming, just like that. And he had a very strong case. And also from my experience with the students, a lot of the students here at NT, well, I think depending on the cohort, 30 to 50 percent of the students are working part-time jobs or doing their own business or doing things that if they had full-time uh, ability to do that job full-time, they can earn a pretty good living. However, I would like to say that my friend was right that you don't really need to college, but why I agreed to him up to a point okay, that it's not required. But after reviewing what we did in college and things like that, I think he missed three important points. And uh, that before you go tell your parents that your dean or your lecturer tells you you don't need to college and you're gonna quit and go do your full-time job right now, and before my boss is right in front of me right now tells me I don't have to come back to work on Monday ever again, <laughs> allow me to finish my talk, this is where the butt comes in. Okay, first thing, these are the three points that I believe he missed. Not everyone can pick up things as fast as he does, or like this guy. Yeah, this guy won gold medal at the World Championships by learning how to throw better on YouTube. But not many people can do that. Not anyone can learn the way he does. Online, by himself, pick up the books. And of course, some of you may know about this one. So the thing about medical trainers needing certification, well, if you don't get caught, I think you're fine. But if you get caught, yeah, you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I can train yourself to be a dentist. And she was pretty good. She had a long stream of customers until something went wrong. Okay? And three, I believe you can learn things in college that you will never be able to do online, YouTube, Google, whatever, and, or even in a textbook. And that's the but for the, my talk today. I believe there are four things here, very important things, that college can teach you outside of the basic thing. The first one, of course, is the cliché soft skills. You've heard about it. But just because it's cliché doesn't mean it's not true. Okay. Uh, soft skills, the usual communication, teamwork, good dynamics, trustworthiness, blah, 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 blah. Uh, strong work ethic, adaptability, blah, 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 blah. You also learn things like um, time management, people management, and most importantly, which people don't tell you that you do learn in uh, college, Boss management. What's boss management? First of all, in order to learn how to manage your bosses, you want to see your teachers are not your enemies. 
Okay? Yes, you may, some of you may think that teachers are out there to give as many Fs as they can get and to set a new record for the number of Fs they can give per semester, but no, that's not the way most lecturers work. Uh, they actually try to help you, both the good, the bad, the boring. Try and see them as your practice bosses. Okay? And some of them can be your mentors, even if they're the right field that you're interested in, or, and some of them may be your friends. Now, what do you mean by practice bosses? Because at work, you're going to face all sorts of bosses as well. You've got the good, the bad, the boring, the boss from hell, the task driver, the slave master, all sorts. How are you going to manage them? This is where you practice, in college. Where you're only going to be there for four, for four months or the semester, and, if you're, and you're done. Or else your boss is going to see them a lot longer than that. And maybe you get a good boss, but how do you deal with the other department heads? Like finance, bursary, um, sales, marketing, PR, and other, other different departments they're going to have to work with. Every one of them has their own requirements, own expectations, own policies that they have to follow, and they want you to follow. So, in college, the teachers have their own expectations as well. For you to be able to be good boss managers, take the opportunity, both the good, the bad, and the boring, learn how to manage the expectations. Ask the right questions, ask the good questions, and don't be too afraid of them. Most of them don't bite. They may have a lot of bark, but not much bite. Most of them. Okay? Second one. College is a safe space for you to fail. Yes, fail. Try. You may fail. You may succeed. But in the end, hopefully you will learn something from what you've done. Okay? So, here, in college, we know your students. So, you're not expected to get it right the first time. You're not supposed to get 100% all the time, every time. Because you're a student. You're allowed to make mistakes. You're allowed to fail. Because this is where you learn. This is that safe space to learn before you go out. And this is not to say that when you're, those people are already working who didn't go to college won't learn this, but you have more time and more freedom than those people have because the margin of failure once you go out to work is very, very small. And some places where a zero, a wrong decimal point can cost you the difference between 100,000 and 1 million, you, have, you may have zero chances to making mistakes at work. Here, just one mark. It may only cost you one mark, five marks. The final exam may cost you a little bit more, but it's just your grade. So remember, never be afraid of failure here in college, because this is the place to fail, to make mistakes, to try, to do new things. And if you make mistakes, it's okay. You learn, you grow from it. Because even uh, Richard Branson himself admitted, in business, one thing is certain, you will make mistakes. Especially when you're pushing boundaries, like he did, innovating, trying new things, you'll make plenty of mistakes. How you react to that mistakes is important. Okay. So, it's only a real failure if you don't learn from it. Because most people think from all the TV shows, all the videos, everything, the path to success is just this straight line. But there are people who've done it, and I think um, the guy, the photography guy, Adrian Yap, himself said, he didn't succeed right away. It took him two years, three years, to go around here, make mistakes, learn, and then finally to get where he was. It's a learning process. Okay. Now, why is it a safe place to fail? Because if you fail, maybe it's going to cost your grade, may cost a bit of time, a bit of money, because you've got to repeat it. But when you go to work, it could cost you your job or your career. So make the most of your opportunity. Join a club and a society, join an event, join, try doing something you didn't do before. Because this is the best time to do it. Expectations are low, and you've got to, if it doesn't work out well, it's okay. We understand, we've been there. As long as you learn from it, okay? Third thing, college can teach you, self-discovery. Remember the safe space to fail? This is the safe, because it's a safe space to fail, you've got time to discuss and discover your strengths, your weaknesses, and your limits, your real limits. Push yourself, push further, try something new. 
do something different. Find out how, just how much time it takes for you to do a good presentation. How long it takes for you to get your assignment right. You can only do it last minute so often. How many days you can go without sleeping? Uh, three days? Please don't do that too often, okay? Don't collapse in front of class, that's bad. But once in a while, okay? Once in a while. And uh, how many projects can you take on in one week before you reach your limit? Of course, remember your teachers are your practice bosses, mentors, friends. Try not to tear a muscle or get a nervous breakdown. Seek advice. We've been there. We have done that. We have failed before. And we can recognize when you are making the same mistakes we used to make 10, 20 years ago. And we're not trying to tell you to control you or to be your parents. But it's because we see it. Maybe you're doing it different. That's good. But doesn't mean you shouldn't listen it either. Yes. Learn to stretch yourself even what you think is possible. But make sure the tree can support your weight, huh? Okay. So, safe space for failure. Safe space to discover yourselves. And finally, the most important one. This is where college really comes on its own. This is a place for ideas. This is a place for sharing of ideas. People from different backgrounds, different programs, different majors, different ways of seeing things and doing things. Ideas. To share their ideas. And college and universities are that melting this bubbling pot of ideas, new ideas, exciting ideas, because you guys have the freedom and the time to think and try out these new ideas in this safe space that you have. To try, to fail, to refine your idea and do it again. Oops, back. And if you've got the right idea, the good idea, these ideas can change the world. And um, in small, subtle ways, in major ways, and sometimes even in revolutionary ways, these ideas can change. But ideas is one thing. You got to act on your ideas. So use your time in college to put your ideas into practice. Because ideas plus action, that's where the real change happens. I'm giving you three examples of people whose ideas change the world. Not in the way you think it is. This one has been recorded many times, but I don't think many of you know about this. You guys know what calligraphy is? Yeah, it's that fancy writing, yeah? This is how being exposed to the idea of calligraphy changed the way Steve Jobs saw computers. And he said, if I never dropped in on that single calligraphy class in Reed College, the Macintosh would never have multiple typefaces of proportionally spaced fonts. This was the first time the Mac, the first offering of fonts they had. Bit of history lesson here. Do you guys remember, uh, those of you who are around my time, remember WordPerfect, WordStar, Lotus123? Uh, my bosses can remember that. Yes, I'm revealing my age as well. How many fonts did we have when it comes to choosing the fonts? Or maybe, and then the all variations of that same font. But when Steve Jobs got exposed to it, he realized, you know what? Maybe it'd be nice to have different fonts, different types. And this small little change, and now we've got hundreds of fonts, thousands. You can download it and find. You can recreate your own fonts now. Just because of that idea of calligraphy, making things look a little better. Here's another one that's changed the world. You guys know who he is, yeah? You guys know the history of uh, Facebook? Yeah, right, no need to talk about much. Five friends, he started in Harvard University, the idea of Facebook. And that has really changed the world, hasn't it? They started revolutionaries because of that. And finally, here's an extreme case of revolutionary ideas. This is a whole mass of people on top of the stadium, and this is in Indonesia, 1998. They call it Reformasi 1998. That was when uh, President Suharto stepped down after ruling for nearly 30 years in Indonesia. And this was because of students in Indonesia. And this was not the first time they had done it. In 1966, they, because of the students, Indonesia caused the tapping down of the previous dictator, Sukarno, and Suharto took over. And later then, he tried to suppress the students because he saw what's happening, but it didn't work. Eventually, the students 
revolutionary ideas created a change in Indonesia that actually led them to have a change in Indonesia. Now, I understand how sensitive things are, especially in a few weeks' time here in Malaysia. So here's a disclaimer. I'm neither promoting nor condemning any overthrow of any government by any student revolution. This is just a historical fact of extreme example how student ideas can move students to change that world. Moving on. <laughs> just in case, you know, someone sees this and you may not see me two weeks later. <laughs> okay. Now, being the safe space for ideas that you have here in college, how do you get these exposures? This is where the college societies, the talks, especially TEDx. So I'm really glad so many of you took the time out on a Saturday, paid for it too, normally the talks are free, coming for a talk like this to get exposed to different ideas. That's where you get the exposure. Try something new. Go to a different talk. Go to a different speaker. Get out of your cliques. Try every semester, if you have a group project, don't work with the same group of people every semester. Work for a different group of people. It may be difficult, it may be challenging, but you, will learn, you may learn a new way of seeing things and doing things which you never had discovered before. Because you need to get exposed to these ideas of how things can be done or should be done. And this will prepare you too when you go out to work. And you get different ideas and some people are very, very hard on their ideas, very stubborn on giving up their ideas. You have to learn how to work with that as well. Okay? This is a safe space and incubator. College works as an incubator for these ideas for you to try and try again, develop it, refine it, maybe even change. Now, what does this all mean for you? Well, this is your time. This is the safe space. This is the two to four years that you have, that time and freedom and that space to try out new things, to push yourself, to learn new limits, what you can and cannot do, to discover what your real limits are, not what you've been told to you by your previous teachers, previous friends, maybe even your family. Try out to be yourself. Discover something new. And if you've come to a new limit, push it further. Push yourself further to try new things. Dare yourself to come out of the comfort zone. Okay? And who knows what you can, what will change. The way you see yourself, like that fish, Taking himself a shark in the thing? Yeah, why not? Right? Lion, the lion that you can be or will be, that's your goal, that's what you want to be. And most importantly, because I understand some of you have a lot of um, things you have to balance, work, family, studies, and things like that. You don't have time for activities anymore. Try and make that. Maybe not as often, maybe one idea, new idea, one new talk one new project, one new group a year. Try it, just to see where you can go. But most importantly, don't forget to have fun. Huh? That's why I like Branson. Take a chance, best way to test yourself, but have fun. Don't see it as a negative thing. That's when you, when you become afraid of failure. Have fun, try it. Because when you're having fun trying it, you have no problem getting up and doing it again, something different. And once you have experienced new ideas, and once your mind has been stretched by new ways of seeing things, your horizons have been broadened, it's very difficult for you to go back to the old you, the you you were before you were in high school, or when you first entered college. You will have seen new things. So, push harder, go further, and when that happens, you will come and realize that you will have gone further and higher than you, you or anyone else could have ever have imagined. And this is the best place to do it in college. The best time. This is not the end yet. This is just the beginning. No, not the beginning of my talk. <laughs> For you who has been exposed to new ideas, maybe you don't find anything inspiring yet. Just to understand more speakers. Or maybe the seed of an idea may have started. Okay? And that will just be the beginning for your idea to slowly take root and grow and develop. And who knows, one of your ideas may start to change the world. And I know one of the, one of the uh, upcoming speakers, his idea of safe water filters, easy to maintain, is going to change the way things are going to happen in uh, East Malaysia. All because of an idea that he started here in college. Push yourselves. 
And who knows, you may find yourself the next uh, TED speaker, yeah? <laughs> Never expected that, right? <laughs> Good. So let this be the beginning of it. Thank you very much for your time for listening.